Welcome everyone to the 2020 Jeep Gladiator. Not only is this my first experience with the Gladiator, it's my first experience with the Jeep Wrangler, as this car is of course based upon the all new JL Wrangler that came out last year. Now there is a lot that I want to discuss about this vehicle that just make this vehicle so much fun to live with. And at the end of this video, of course, I'll place it in my ranking system to see where it competes against other mid-size quarter-ton trucks. Many thanks have to go off to courtesy Chrysler in the Calgary Auto Mall that were able to lend this all new Gladiator off to me for a couple days so I can review it. If you like what you see in this video regarding this specific vehicle, head over to their dealership where you can test drive this exact model alongside 25 other gladiators that they have in stock right now. So this all new Gladiator, if you're not aware what Jeep has done to really change the underpinnings of this vehicle, you might simply see it as a Wrangler with a bed. And yeah, it looks like it. It kind of looks like with that shallow bed, it was a bit of an afterthought for the team but there has been significant revisions and structural changes to the gladiator over the wrangler really justifying its own name and justifying being a part of a totally different segment so the wheelbase is 19.4 inches longer overall it's one configuration the four door five foot bed with a 1600 payload capacity and if you go with the max towing package you can get up to 7650 pounds towing capacity now if you were to tow any sort of weight with the wrangler you might notice it with any owners using it for that purpose today you'll get this real squatting look at the rear that's because the wrangler is meant to have a kind of squidgy suspension system it's meant to tackle the worst of road conditions whilst the gladiator it is built to be a truck so it has a totally different rear suspension system here it's a five link system where it's been designed to not only handle the capability of a 1600 pound payload capacity but that 7650 towing capacity as well we might as well touch upon the bed quickly. Back there, you'll have the ability to get a spray in bed liner if you choose. This truck doesn't have it, but you'll see you have the LED lights, the tie downs, and you can get adjustable cleats in this vehicle as well. The tailgate locks with the rest of the vehicle when you lock it with the key fob or with the keyless entry system with the little button on the plastic door handle. And there's a halfway open mode with the Gladiator as well. If you want to load in something that's just perhaps a bit too big, then you can use the cables, tuck them behind these black circular pieces, and that will hold it in position. It is a soft closing trunk as well. And personally, I would like to see some kind of sidestep integrated, maybe have it hidden away like Ford does it, or have the bumper sidesteps like what Chevrolet does. That's something I would really like to see that isn't currently available on the Gladiator. And then maybe having the bed light that looks over on top of the bed rather than in the corners of it is another omission that some truck owners would like to see, I think. A few other details at the back there, you'll see these bike treads printed into the steel bed. This is for anybody that's trying to drive in their bike. They'll have a little indicator of where the tire should go, or maybe an ATV as well. I'm in the Overland model, which is the mid-spectrum. You'll have the entry-level Sport S, then the Overland, and then the Rubicon. Here we have some significantly different tires, though, and a wheel package that was implemented by the dealership. They're 33 by 12s on 17-inch rims. And they're just brilliant. I mean, I can look down and I can see them hanging far over the wheel arch. And this is a good compromise, a good in-between of the Overland and the Rubicon. If you want a vehicle that has perhaps just a little more off-road capability, but isn't the full bore Rubicon. So let's talk about those differences. If you are going for a Rubicon, I really hope you're the kind of person that is using it to go off serious off-roading very often because you'll have a lot of systems available to you outside of the standard four-wheel drive system with the transfer box that will take you from two high to four high 
then full low mode. There's a couple other active drive modes that can exist, but with the Overland, you'll get everything that you want. You can have manual shifting if you want it with the eight speed automatic, the hill descent control, the ability to totally turn off traction control, and a few different information setups available in this Overland with the seven inch digital instrument cluster, and then the upgraded 8.4 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, where you have off-road pages that will give you some information towards the pitch and roll and where the power is being distributed. And driving this Gladiator, I can't compare to the Wrangler, Again, I haven't driven it with that increase in wheelbase. Jeep says that this will make it a much more stable car. It'll make the ride a little more compliant. And with these much thicker wheels, I'm sure it adds a little bit of road softness as well. But the things that I've really noticed driving this Wrangler, not Wrangler, Gladiator, is that whenever I turn this steering wheel, it really feels like the rear wheels have a second trailing motion it feels like whatever i put in the front wheels will do it and then half a second later the rear wheels will do it as well and going at any sort of speed you feel like you're constantly readjusting the steering wheel when you go on highway driving even more so of course being based on a wrangler one of its pitfalls is that it isn't the most refined car it's very slab sided the windshield is bolted upright Beside of having constant attention to the steering wheel, constantly adjusting it in its lane, I'd say it's fairly decent to drive. The ride's very good. Other things pertaining to the driving experience, I really like this engine. 280 horsepower, 265 pound-feet of torque. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough to really get this Gladiator moving. It sounds fairly decent. The automatic stop-start system works very well. So anybody looking for a compact SUV or a mid-sized truck that puts refinement above anything else, the Wrangler or the Gladiator doesn't satisfy that. And that's not what it's meant to do. I get that, but on highway drives, it is really loud in here. Thankfully, the sound system is really good. You've got the speakers that are built into the firewall. You have them just above in this cross member. And this Gladiator has the additional Bluetooth speaker system where just behind the passenger side rear seat, you can disconnect it and hook it up to the Bluetooth on your phone. And if you and your friend have a Jeep Gladiator with both of those Bluetooth speakers, you can hook them up together to make a waterproof Bluetooth stereo sound system. It's made by Alpine, but I couldn't find anything on their website to see if, you know, it's one of their speaker systems with just a Jeep badge stamped into it. I couldn't find it, but if you guys can find the specific model, I'd love to uh, find out which one it is. So leave it in the comments down below. The sight lines of the Gladiator kind of feels like a bit of a letterbox setup. I feel like I've got a really thin windshield, which of course can fold down. The side view here is excellent and getting used to having the window switches in the center as opposed to on the door is a bit of a learning curve I haven't adjusted to quite yet. Rearward visibility is okay but again it feels a little like I'm looking out of a letterbox just a really thin amount of glass. You can slide the rear glass if you're six foot four like myself. You can happily sit behind someone the same height as you. The rear seats are actually stadium raised, meaning that the seat bottoms are a little taller so that people can have a better outlook into the front, don't feel like they're isolated back there. Fold the rear seats down or fold them up to have some hidden storage that's located underneath the seats. Here we have the Freedom hardtop, so with three detachable panels, you can totally remove the roof, take down the windshield and take off the doors as well. I'm not gonna be doing it with this car. It is a brand new model. I'd hate to get something scratched up, but here's a very quick look at how easy it is to remove. You'll get a soft bag included as well. So if you really did want to take it all apart, stuff it away, throw it into the bed, it will have a little bit of protection. Quarbles with the interior? I really don't have much. There is an assortment of hard and soft plastics, but some leather appointments like on the steering wheel and the seats and where you rest your arms. Where this vehicle does have the upgraded leather package. The open head screws are for style, but it looks good. You've got the grab handle here along the A pillar and directly in front of the glove box. 
Storage is lacking a little bit. Uh, we do have a grippy portion up here above the touch screen and some netting here in the door cards. But beyond that, the glove box is a bit small. The center console doesn't have a lot of space. Love how grippy these cup holders are. And I have to say the rear view camera that's in this Gladiator is potentially the highest definition camera and well, not necessarily screen because you can see a quite a bit of the pixel edging here in the main menu. But just with that reversing camera, that is so sharp. Just like the Wrangler, you have four auxiliary switches that are built into the dashboard. So anybody wanting to customize their Wrangler or Gladiator with some light bars or any additional equipment, you can just plug in and go rather than drilling into the dashboard and potentially damaging your vehicle. Just like the Wrangler, if you want to take all of those components off and wash down the interior with a hose, you can take out the carpet, unplug to let all the water flow out. Not only does the Gladiator have all of the characteristics of the Wrangler, it really does have its own merit. It makes sense as a mid-size truck. It makes sense as somebody that really wants the off-road capability, but is seriously going to use the additional use of the bed and the towing capacity as well. And just the image of this thing is awesome. So that wraps up all of my thoughts regarding the Jeep Gladiator. This thing as a vehicle packs so much character. There's so many things to this ownership experience that are joyful, that are entertaining. Now, when it comes to comparing it against other mid-size trucks, I know you can get some with a lot more standard technology. I know you can get a lot more with better on-road feel and refinement. And I actually feel quite conflicted when it comes to the Gladiator, because I know that for my own personal use, I spend a lot of time on the highway. I spend a lot of time in the circumstances where this Wrangler is potentially at its weakest. But here's the thing, this Gladius succeeds so well in its mission, it is exactly what it needs to be. And because of that, I think this is a segment leader against mid-size quarter ton trucks. So that's been everything from me. Thank you so much for taking the time to watching this video. Please like the video if you liked it and share it if you think other people will like it too. And if you wanna do me the biggest favor in the world, hit that subscribe button as well. Again, this video wouldn't be possible without the help of courtesy Chrysler, Jeep, Dodge, and Ram in Calgary's Auto Mall that were able to lend this car off to me for a couple days so I could review it. All of their information is linked down below, and if you want to test drive this exact vehicle or the other 25 Gladiators that they have in stock right now, head over to their dealership. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again soon.